It costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. It's very difficult to figure out how long it's going to take. It's very difficult to figure out if it's any good or not. Um, and there have been there has been a lot of desire to try to bring these facts under control. There have been many attempts and I'm going to tell you a lot of times during this class there have been a lot of failures and there's a lot of things we really don't know. There's, we're going to show you stuff during this course that we're going to have to say we don't have any idea whether this one is any better than that one and not only do we not know whether it's any better we don't even know how to find out. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're going to stop trying. We, meaning the whole world. Um, so engineering is the concept here. Well, engineering comes from originally building bridges and measuring fields and, and fields like agricultural fields, not fields like electrical fields. And engineering has been seen to be a, um, a successful way of bringing rigor and control to difficult problems. That has been done by a combination of measurement. You measure how big a field, you measure how wide the river is, you need to make a bridge. You measure how strong your materials are and so on. Then mathematics. Measurement abstracts the physical into an ideal and mathematics are the tools for working with the ideal. So engineering consists of measurements and then it consists of mathematics and then it consists of tools. Tools to manipulate the abstractions, tools to implement the design, tools to create the design. And by saying that we'd like to be able to create something called software engineering, to be able to apply this, this triple collection, actually there's a fourth one, discipline. I had a great slide for that, but I forgot. Um, anyway, discipline is the ability to stick to a plan, to stick to methodology, to be able to say six months later, what did you do and why did you do it, and to do it again, and again, and to improve. Okay. Um, okay, so these are viewed as being good things. We'd like to be able to do this to software. Well, there's a big difference between saying we'd like to be able to do them and saying we can do them. The mathematics that's available for this, very little. You know, if any of you were scared when I said mathematics, there's not much. Huh? Okay, well, um, the measurement will show you, but mostly it's going to turn out to be tools. And one of the characteristics of tools in the software business is that software tools are made of software, right? So they have all the usual characteristics of software. They're expensive, they're buggy, you know, they're, they're not documented, they break all the time, and so on. So, how do you use bad tools to make good software? This is, this is something we're going to think about during this course. Um, okay, well, what is software engineering? According to the IEEE, the Institute of, see if I can say this right, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or is it electronic engineers, one or the other, um, it's the application of a systematic, disciplined, quantifiable, Quantifiable is the measurement. Disciplined is the discipline. Um, approach to the development, operation, and maintenance of software. That's what we're going to learn about. So, from our perspective, slightly differently, it's a set of principles and techniques intended to move the software development away from being an art form an art form, a, 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 an art form is when there is no recorded 
way to reliably do something. It is dependent on the intuition and practice of the individual artisan, the individual expert. Think of a painter, a, a, not a painter who paints a ceiling, but a painter who paints paintings. Okay, that's an art form. Nobody can tell you how to paint a Rembrandt painting. Okay, it is, you've got to be a Rembrandt to do it. Okay, that's an art form. And that creates great stuff. There's nothing wrong with art forms. But art forms is not engineering. Okay, if I'm going to build a cathedral, I want to hire an engineer to make the columns and an artist to paint the ceiling. Okay, so software engineering is moving us away from being an art form into being a discipline. And I have to say, I've been working with computers since they were born. A um, long time. In some ways, it's less exciting to do software engineering than it is to sit up there and do programming. With programming, there's a great feeling of creativity. There's a great freedom. You can do anything you want. Um, that works best when you don't have somebody who wants to pay you for it when it's all done. So we're, we're looking at the, the more mundane side. Think of it another way. This course is the course in which you stop being individual hackers and become professionals. Okay? When, you, when you leave this course, you should be somebody that would, people would be proud to hire to design a software system for them. That's our objective. Well, if we're going to look at the question of what what software ought to be, what, what we need to accomplish in order to make, in order to bring software engineering into existence. I mean, we're really, we're talking about the birth of a discipline here. What characteristics are we going to have? What characteristics are we going to want to have? Pretty colors? Probably not. That's not really our objective but it depends on what the use is. Now, everybody, every book that you look at will have a different list here. In particular, your textbook has a different list. And I'll, I'll make a few comments as I go through here about the differences between our list and his list, their list. Um, what are the qualities of good software? Well, first of all, there's functional correctness. In other words, it has to do what it's supposed to do. That may sound silly, but there's a lot of software around that doesn't do that. And I'm not going to name names up here, but there's some pretty well-known names there. Um, usability. It can do absolutely what it's supposed to do, but not be possible to use. It may be that there's no way to use it without... Um, Having, making errors in your typing, let's say. You know, you, there's just no way you can, you, there's no way you can type in a 72-digit number and have it be correct, right? Um, you, you've got to think about how can I make it so the user doesn't have to type in a 72-digit number? Or if they have to type it in once, they certainly shouldn't have to type it in a second time. Okay. Um, well, usability isn't only things like the user interface. There's other aspects to it as well. Um, how often does it crash? How much time do you spend rebooting? And so on. Is it, is it natural to do the kinds of things you want to do with it? Um, then there's maintainability. Now, of course, if you knew exactly what your software was supposed to do in the beginning, and if you were a perfect software designer, then there would no be, be no issue of maintainability because there would never be anything to fix and you would never want to improve it. But that doesn't happen very often. So the question of software that can be created to be practical to maintain is an important attribute here. And again, don't forget we're talking about a software system so we've got multiple people involved. So she may have to maintain your program and vice versa. Um, reliability and robustness. 